I'm Gilgadane. I've set out to prove that I'm worthy of being amongst the top tier of people to play an old medieval point and click game. I have a grind ahead of me, and right now I need to strike gold. I have one goal. The Max Infernal Cape. This is my infernal dream. You. You are the one from my dreams. My infernal dreams. I'm throwing down today. There is one major equipment upgrade I need before I'm inferno ready. The, the bow, bow of Fed Dinner. Fedinen, or Bofa for short, is one of the best ranged weapons in the game. Fuck! When accompanied by the crystal armor set, it gets a percentage damage increase per piece. Being that it's so sick, it comes with a hefty price tag of over 100 mil for the enhanced crystal weapon seed needed to make it. Including the armor seeds for the crystal set, it comes to a total of 130 mil plus. This will be by far the biggest purchase I've ever made in OSRS. The last time I spent so much money was on the Dragon Hunter Lance, which I bought at a hefty 70 mil three months before TOA came out. And it's only been up from there. Well, you know what they say, lightning doesn't strike twice, so I'm sure this huge investment will be just fine. Anyway, we finished the last episode at 425 mil bank value. I need to make somewhere in the ballpark of 80 to 100 mil to be able to afford the set if I also sell the Dragon Warhammer. I know that might hurt to hear for some players, but I'm solely focused on getting Inferno ready right now, and there is zero content I do where the D Warhammer is strictly better than a Bandos God Sword. The Dragon Warhammer and Bandos God Sword have similar special attacks, which reduce the defense of the target. The main difference is that the D Warhammer is always a standard 30%, while the BGS drains varying amounts depending on the damage dealt, and also drains other stats like strength, prayer, and attack. For now, as long as I have at least one of them, I'm all good. By the time I desperately need a Dragon Warhammer specifically, I'm likely to be able to spare the money for it anyway. Excuse is over, let's get on with our money making. I'm at 93 Slayer, a good level for making money. A majority of tasks I do end up breaking even if not making money, and some of them offer huge drops. My strategy around Slayer right now is prioritising tasks that give both good GP and XP. Tasks that give good GP for low effort though are also high on my list, even if the XP is slow. This is why I've been picking up all the Vaya tasks I can. Vaya's are easy to AFK with a nice accessible prayer restore and bank. I could basically just set up my account to do the task and every now and then pick up nice drops and restore prayer. Vaya's are usually crowded by AFKers and suspected bots. This is generally because it's a great low effort money maker, and the highest requirement to get here is completion of Sins of the Father, which is pretty quick to complete on a mid level account. The money here pretty much exclusively comes from the Bloodshard drop, which can be combined with the Amulet of Fury to give it a lifesteal effect. It also happens to go for 5 mil. Unfortunately, I didn't hit any Bloodshards this time. I also got my first Phantom Musper task, which was probably one of the best tasks I've done ever. The boss is fun already, but with the added damage bonus from the Slayer Helm, it was incredible. This boss has really earned its place in my top 5 bits of PVM. The money is so good, and the fight itself is just so much fun, it's sick. If you haven't done Secrets of the North, you're really missing out. Basilisk Knights are another kind of slow task. Oh, give me the fucking jaw, give me the jaw, give me the jaw. It's the only reason I do this task, give me the jaw. Especially compared to my standard fare, like the bursting tasks I've been doing. But at only 1 in a thousand, the Basilisk Jaw drop is just too enticing to skip the task. The jaw can be combined with the Nator's Knot Helm to make the Nator's Knot face guard, which is one of the best in slot helmets in the game. So it's no wonder that the jaw goes for 20 mil plus on the Grand Exchange, and it's actually climbing right now, and it's actually in my inventory right now. Yeah, fucking let's go! <laughs> 21 mil! I am so happy with that. <laughs> That's exactly what I was looking for. 
We always love Abyssal Demons, it's such an easy task and so tasty, especially when we get an Abyssal Rip drop. Oh, <laughs> what day? Oh shit. We love a whip. We always love a whip. I've seen a lot of people bursting these recently. It seems to be more of a recent trend because this isn't something I used to see a lot. Most people would just pray melee and then auto retaliate. But it seems that these days it's actually worth bursting. Probably something I'll look into in the near future. Huge shout out to the two stubborn clan chat. I won a goodie bag and ended up lucking out and getting a free amulet of fury out of it which is just a nice two mil towards <laughs> What a great and funny episode of the RuneScape series Invernal Dream, created by popular and sexy YouTuber Gilgadane. Don't you think? Well apparently, some of you are missing out. If my analytics are anything to go by, 2% of you are subscribed. This means that it's incredibly likely that you're watching right now, aren't subscribed, have absolute negative riz and no bitches. I really think you need to sort that out. Hit subscribe and also like, otherwise I'll set an angry dog on you. I've been doing clue scrolls as soon as they drop now. Yes, this is something I should have been doing from the very start, but now I'm at the point where I can basically do any clue step and I cleared up all of the clues that I had in my inventory last time. <laughs> That's TKC later. There are occasionally the rare master steps that I can't do, but most of them are within reach. Easy money. <laughs> I guess it could have been third age, <laughs> which would have been insane on my fourth clue. I'm actually mainly looking to knock out medium clues. The ranger boots are a rare unique drop from mediums, and they also happen to be some of the best ranged boots in the game. Unfortunately, most of the PVM I do drops hard or elite clues, so if I'm dead set on getting the boots from a clue scroll rather than dropping 35mm on them, I might need to start grinding for medium specifically. Between clue scrolls, I hit up some monkeys to get my ranged up to 97. And I also saw that I was one level away from 2k total, so with mining at only 400 XP away, I went over to the mining guild, and headphone warning, 81 mining, and that is 2000 total level. <laughs> Hell yeah, 2000 total, let's fucking go. That's such a huge milestone for me. I'm very happy with that bank this iron. <laughs> Consider this a prelude to the forthcoming skilling episode to get my final inferno prep done. Speaking of skilling... Oh, fuck. Oh, no. 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 Not saving. What have I done to deserve this? Getting thieving on this wheel is my worst nightmare. I know I've expressed my hatred for farming, but I don't know, I think thieving may be my least favourite skill. The upside is it's a complete head empty skill, so I can zone out while I give myself RSI. My wrist hasn't worked this hard since I was a teenager. There are realistically two options for training thieving, blackjacking and pickpocketing. Even with left click swaps, blackjacking can be a pain, so I chose to pickpocket for the entire 1 mil XP. Pickpocketing until 90 is best done at Knights of Ardoin. The success rate is pretty high, and they can be lured into spots that completely trap them. In this instance, the knight has been trapped in a position where I can only move to the two tiles, meaning I can just position my camera properly. Wake up! With my wrist now in a terrible shape, I of course hit up the usual suspects, TOA, Phantom Musper, I even did a couple KC at Nightmare again, but I didn't really get anything big, just some consistent income. I need to unpack why I feel so much shame about this, but I spent quite a lot of time at 4 -Kath. The money is too consistent, and Superior Dragon Bones are at a real high right now, so it's even better. I also really want the pet, so there. Before I could allow myself to dare touch the bofa though, I had to get revenge. I stand here before you, ready. I think. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I fucking did it. <laughs> I got the. <laughs> uh, that was such a fast run. Oh my god. <gasps> I've changed my mind. The gauntlet's actually kind of sick. Failing the gauntlet like I did left me feeling real sore to the point where I did have to go touch grass. So the fact that I went back in and got it done in like four attempts is actually kind of insane to me. I think it just speaks volumes about how sometimes you do need to just step away, forget about something for a while, and then come back to it with a fresh mind. I now understand why people enjoy it, although I don't know if I could bring myself to grind it out. It's probably something I'll save for an Iron Man in the future. I do really like how the pet looks though. After getting a few more KC at the Corrupted Gauntlet just to make sure I had definitely learned it, I continued on my way around the PVM roulette, making as much money as I could, and so with my bank value scraping 500 mil, it was time to liquidate. The loot tab is at 60 mil. There's about 60 to 70 mil worth of stuff I can liquidate reasonably easily. Feeling confident that I had enough, I started liquidating. I said at the start that I'd be getting rid of my Dragon Warhammer and I ended up doing that earlier to buy an Osmonton's Fang temporarily. I ended up selling this for now, but we'll be seeing the Fang again soon, don't you worry. In my rush to scrape together the funds, I did some inadvisable stuff, like selling off large amounts of my runes. Don't do this, it's really dumb. And with my money in hand like a golden ticket, I started buying all the crystal armor seeds I needed, plus the enhanced weapon seed and enhanced teleport seeds to break down into crystals. I gotta tell you, making a purchase this big is a real rush. Let's drink Dwarven Stout, sing crystal, make a bofa. <laughs> and there it is! <laughs> After so long, I finally have the bofa. This has taken so long to get. I have a bofa, in my hands. I want to recolor it, but I need to scrimp and save right now. I've basically used all of my funds to get this and I kind of need to rebuild a little bit. I do really want to get that fang back, but for now, we're going to leave it. The important part is that we have the boa for denim. It's such a huge upgrade over my range setup, especially since I had to return the armadillo crossbow I was borrowing, and I'm not really keen on the idea of going back to the dragon crossbow. With a bow for in hand, I am now within a hair's breadth of being able to tackle the inferno. I just need a ring of suffering, the dexterous prayer scroll, and then I'm officially set up. Well, and then there's all the stat training I need to do. But that's for next time. For now, let's take the bow for a little spin. Yes! <laughs> I just fucking did it! I just walked in and did it! Oh my fucking god! <laughs> oh my fucking god! Next episode, we're going to finalize the setup for the Inferno. I'm starting to get real nervous. It's getting real close. If you want to see it, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you there. It's only like a matter of a month or two until I'm ready, I think. I'll tell you what, to be honest, I am bricking it. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. I've been away from home a lot recently, but I'm back now, and I'm so excited to take on the Inferno. Here we are, once more, right at the end. These days, it seems like most people are entirely focused on self-care, but take a moment to help those around you. If you need love and attention, then trust me, your peers certainly do too. A little empathy and understanding makes the world go round.